Hey there Dev Squad, Ryan here. In this video, we're going to be creating the logic for joining, hosting, and searching for servers. During the video, we'll be creating a game instance, a game mode, a struct, and changing some settings in our project to use the blueprints that we've created. So let's get started. First, we want to create a new folder for all of our new blueprints. We're just going to name this game for right now. And inside our game folder, we want to create a new struct. And to do this, you can hover down here into the blueprints and then structure. Let's just name this server settings. This is going to hold some of the settings for our server. And then inside this struct, we want to add three variables. The first one is going to be map name. Second one is public connections. And the third is server settings. The map name needs to be a name type. Public connections needs to be an integer. And server settings needs to be a session session property key pair. We need to make sure this is an array. You can save that. Uh, let's go ahead and set the public connections to five by default. Now that we've created that, we want to create our game instance. So to do that, we're just going to type in all classes, game instance. We're going to click on this game instance here and create new. Let's just name this multiplayer game instance. Okay. Now we want to create another blueprint class. This is going to be a game mode. You don't want to click on this game mode right here. Um, this will automatically give you game mode base as a parent class, and that's not what we want. We're going to type in down here, game mode, and we're going to make a game mode from the game mode. Just click select, and then multiplayer game mode. Then we want to open this one up. And inside of here, let's just make sure that our default pawn class is set to first person character. And then we want to make sure that seamless travel is enabled. There we go. We can just save and compile that now. Okay, so now that that's done, let's just go into edit, project settings. Now we need to make sure that our game is using the game mode that we just created and the game instance that we just created. So go into here, into the default game mode, and select your game mode. And then up at the top, type in game instance. There we go. And then find your game instance and select that. We can go ahead and close that now. Now that we've got all of our blueprints created and everything set up, we can go ahead and start creating the logic for hosting, joining, and finding servers. So let's get started by creating our custom events. We're going to create four custom events. We're going to do oh, we're going to do host server. We can copy this by control W. Then we're going to do join server. Find servers. And then the last custom event we're going to create is going to be quit to menu. So let's start up here on host server. We need two inputs. The first input is going to be a player controller. So we can just name it player controller and then assign the type here. And we want it to be a player controller object reference. And then the second one is going to be our server settings struct. 
we can just name this server settings. Okay. So first off, we're going to set this player controller to a new variable, and let's call this owner ref. And this will just make sure that the game instance has a reference of who owns it at all times. And the next thing we're going to do is add our create sessions node. So we want the create advanced session. We can just hook this up right here. And then we want to hook up our owner ref to the player controller. Next, we're going to break our server settings. We're going to grab the values public connections and server settings. Next, over here on success, we're going to open level. And we're going to hook up the level name to our map name. And inside of options, we need to type in listen. The last thing we want to do here is we're going to promote our server settings to a variable. And we're going to set that after success. Should put this in between open level and server settings. So next we're going to move down to join servers. Move this down a little bit. And we're going to use the node join session. And we want to plug in the player controller and the search result. And then just in between these two, we want to make sure that we set our owner ref to the player controller. We can save, compile that. Now let's move down to find servers. Find servers, we're going to use the node find sessions advanced. We're also going to plug in our player controller. Max results. And that's all we need. And then we want to create an event dispatcher, which will call out to any blueprint that references this, that we have now found servers. So we're going to just name this server found. We can go ahead and call this. We're going to call this on success and on failure. We need to put an input here. So let's go over to our servers found, create an input. The input that we want is a array of blueprint session result structure. So we can just blueprint session result there. And then we're just going to name this sessions. And then let's make sure that this is an array. Then we can hook that up to results, and we are finished. Now the reason that we're hooking it up to failure is even if we don't find any servers, we want to notify that this event has been called. The last custom event that we're going to create is quit to menu. And quit to menu is just going to destroy session if they're the host. And then at the end, we just want to open level. And this is where we're going to place our main menu level. But for right now, I'm just going to type in first person example map. But the last thing that we want to do inside of our game instance is create some error handling by using the event network error. And if you use this, you can use switch on, and it'll show you the kind of network failures for things like connection lost, connection timeout. We want to just send the, the player to the main menu. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to print string right there. And that'll just print the failure type for us. And then we're going to get the owner ref as well. We'll actually append this. So this will get a name of which player experienced the problem, and this will give you the failure type.
And just to make sure that those are on different lines, what we can do is click on B, hold shift, press enter, and that'll make sure they're on different lines. So next, we want to quit to menu. And then we can just plug in our owner ref to the player controller right there. All right, we can save and quit. We are done with that. So that's the end of the video. I hope you learned something new. And in the next video, we'll be starting on a host server UI that will allow our players to host their own server. Thanks for watching, stay awesome, and keep creating.